Now, if you're just tuning in, <laughs> we are learning <laughs> strategies oh, to retain customers, especially now that cash flow is quite tight. <laughs> yeah, so people's money, you have to you have to be very strategic about collecting money. So how do we ensure that if anyone is spending at all, eh, we are their first choice in terms of um, the kind of business that we do? Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wish Africa One with the hashtag Wish Show, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to zero eight one eight zero three eight four six six three. So I learned something very very interesting today. Mm. I was just saying it during the break that uh, mm. me I I have customer experience. <laughs> That's the strategy I, I employ in my, my business. But mm -hmm. I never called it customer experience, you know, until customer Uti service. broke it down. Yes. That it is only when the customer asks a question, that is when it now changes to service. Exactly. So the experience, when people walk into your business environment, mm -hmm. how, what and is the yes. feeling, you know, how do they feel? Exactly. Ah, that's very important. Too. We are learning. You see why we say on ways? Hey, we have experts. <laughs> hey, okay, let me take okay. some comments and I'll come to you, Isi, for your okay. question. What um what public relation uh, with public relations I would always visit visit a particular store. That's from Roslyn. She mm -hmm. says if they have good public relations, good. she would always visit the store. Okay. Then um Rolake says online customer experience seems to be much better for me these days, though I have had a few bad, but compared to physical outlet, I prefer online service uh, for service experience that's from roller care she stayed if it's in nigeria or if you have in nigeria the... here ni. okay but me i've had bad experience with online no in nigeria they look so good online by the time you nigeria. get to the store yes. it is completely opposite of what is only one particular store that i checked online and by the time i got there yeah the ambience was good the environment mm -hmm. but their their relationship was very you know of just buy what you came to buy and leave and no no personal like making me feel like a queen oh you see where i'm coming from okay I beg you. <laughs> ask your question okay, okay so uti elu so <laughs> there is something you talked about about um the customer being irate in the place and having uh the organization groom that individual to be able to handle the irate customer. So in this context, um, I'm asking, what's the relationship between um, etiquette and customer service? Okay. So etiquette in terms of how you compose yourself, how you comport yourself. A lot of the time, you know, we always, the focus of customer service is always smile. And it's great to smile. Um, but I always tell people, Imagine if a customer is angry, is irate, and, you are smiling. and all you're doing is smiling. It's not going to end well, is it? <laughs> so the idea... was well, so funny. The, idea the, way, the customer will give you like these punches. <laughs> you know, so, so there's the customer being angry. Um, there's the customer, again, also walking up to you and you smile. And then the customer asks you a question, then you can't deliver. So it's not just about the, the, the way you compose yourself. Etiquette is important. Yes, we must know how to approach our, um, engage our customers. We must know how to compose ourselves. So when you're dealing with an irate customer, how do you behave? When you're dealing with a timid customer, how do you behave? So again, this comes to the trainings and the way businesses manage their staff. Thank you. You must teach, you must teach your staff how to understand what customer they're dealing with have you ever met in fact probably yourself you've been a knowledgeable customer you go into a shop or you call and the the person on that end of the line you are the one telling the person what to do exactly mm -hmm. again the person needs to understand there are different skills with which to deal with each of these different types of customers so you have to understand what you know, etiquette is all about how you carry yourself, how you speak, how you compose yourself. Manners. In each of those Manners. situations, you have to know how to behave. Yes. You have to be trained in how to behave. So I once had a situation where um, an employee had a customer who wanted her phone number. Hmm. So because she knew that she couldn't give him a phone number, company policy did not allow it. But she didn't know how to communicate that. So she disappeared and left the customer standing there. Aww. And the customer waited for over an hour before he left. Hmm. So somebody else brought it to my attention and says, oh, did you know that this customer was sitting here because he was waiting for this person to give his number? Hmm. And then I called this person and I said, what, 
what happened? But that she didn't know what to say to him. She didn't know what to do. And I thought, okay, why didn't you ask? It is a simple conversation that says, thank you so much, sir. I'm glad that you enjoyed um, me offering, you know, serving you today. Um, but I'm not able to give you my phone number because against it's against company, company policy. policy. So again, you know, it's all about you understanding how to deal with irate customers. Exactly. You trying to interrupt an irate customer, you trying to interrupt an angry person, it's never going to end well. Never. So it's important that everybody is trained, just like you go and learn etiquette, you learn which fork to use, you learn mm -hmm. how to, you know, drink tea or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. You've got to learn how to deal with different types of customers. Hmm. Okay, so Uti, small businesses, right? Should we go yeah, with small businesses or big businesses? Go with both. Where do you think the biggest challenges um, um, are when it comes to customer experience and you know customer delivery satisfaction and all of that? Is it in the bigger companies or in smaller companies? Because I think at this point, I really can't even I can't decide which which of the business because some some really you see some small really companies small companies doing, doing excellently well. well with their service delivery exactly. because they know that they are growing and while others would just be so they they don't care whether they are growing or not. So if you were to give like an advice on how to um, start the process for a small company, right, and they maybe they don't have so much funds for training and all of that, what would you recommend to them? You know, and are there things that you also do to help small businesses, you know, um, with their customer experience strategy? So small businesses are my favorite, actually. Um, big business is great because there's money, um, but scalability is always difficult. Mm. It's easier to teach two people than it is to teach 2,000. It's not impossible to teach 2,000, but it's invariably more difficult. So with small businesses, Half the time you're dealing with the entrepreneur, you know, most times you're dealing with a sole owner type business. Um, they're just starting out maybe. And you find that there's so many things to deal with. A lot, of the, a lot of the time now with a lot of small businesses, what you find is they're more concerned with the glitz and glamour of social media mm. than the customer experience. So you see this page, the posts are fantastic. Then you DM them and it's a different story. <laughs> so mm. it's important for small businesses to get it right from the onset. One of the things that is so key to customer experience, in fact, customer experience can't exist without it, is culture. Hmm. What culture have you built in your business? Because with knowing the type of business, the type of culture you have in your business, it determines the kind of people that you will hire. Exactly. So it, it, once you get that culture right from the get-go, so when it's you, when you have a vision for a business, you know exactly what that business is. As the entrepreneur, as the owner of that business, you can see in your mind's eye what your business is. When you start to create that business, a lot of the time we focus on products. We focus on capital. Mm. But you also have to focus on the customer. How is the customer going to experience your product? Typically what we think about is branded bags, um, our social media sites, our yeah. website. But you've also got to think about who your customer is. And people, when I say this, people think, oh, it's a grand thing. No. Let me take cosmetics, for instance. So many people are selling makeup on social media. The lady who's going to buy a lip gloss that is 500 naira is different from the lady who's going to buy a lip gloss that is 17,000 naira. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You as a business need to decide which of those two ladies are your customer. Mm. Because those two ladies have very different expectations. Mm. They all have expectations of good service, don't get me wrong. But when I'm spending 17000 on lip gloss, you I have better the serve me coffee. To do a I lot expect more. you to tell me like a goddess. <laughs> I have the capacity to do a lot more. <laughs> exactly. For starters, I have the capacity and I have higher expectations. Mm -hmm. The person who's buying lip gloss for 500 now is probably thinking, oh, fantastic, I found something cheap that I can use and it's quick and easy. So you have to determine, A, is my customer the lady for 500? Is my customer the lady for 17,000? Or is my customer both? Mm. When you're building your business, you need to start to think about those things right from the beginning because the experience you want to give has to match. And, and again, this is not necessarily about the cost of the product. This is just an example. But you must ensure that when you're creating that experience, you know the difference. So that when you encounter that 17,000 naira lady, 
it's not just about oh saying yes ma and everything oh yes anyhow you want it no mm. because you will encounter someone who says this is how i want to do business but that's not how you do business mm. so we had a great example today when yeah, we were talking when, uh, when about TV sent the chat. Mm -hmm. yeah about a graphic designer who says the person chatted him and says oh i want to call you and he says no please chat chat yes she says but i prefer to call and he says, no, this is how I prefer to work. Clearly, this person is not his customer. Hmm. Now, what most people will do is because they want the business, they will call the person. Hmm. Once you call the person, you've set the expectation that you have accepted that you will keep calling the person. Mm -hmm. But this is not your business model. This is not how you do business. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, it's important that you understand who your customer is when you encounter a new customer or a new lead, a potential customer, you explain for them from the get-go, this is how we do business. Now, obviously, this example is a services example. You explain that this is how I deliver service. Yeah. The customer then has a choice to say, okay, I will accept that this is the way you do business, and I will do business with you. Or I accept that the way you do business doesn't work for me, and I'll go and find an alternative. So that from the get-go, you are creating the ability for that customer to have success with you your product and your organization. Most of the time, we chase customer at the detriment of business, mm. which is why when they now say the customer is always right, you can't agree with the customer because the customer is the wrong customer for you. Mm. So and there's subtle things where we say, am I chasing money? Yes, every business is in business to make money. Mm. But if you're getting money from the right customers who understand how you do business and still want to do business with you, you will have the most success. Could you imagine if somebody went to shop on Amazon the first day and said, no, Amazon, I must come to your store. And Amazon <laughs> says, oh, well, actually, you can come to our warehouse. <laughs> then that person keeps going to the Amazon where, can you imagine? Amazon says, no, I'm online. If you want to shop with me, you have to shop online. There's no store to go to. But smaller businesses think, oh, I need the business. I'm just starting out. So let me bend over backwards. That's where the problem starts. Hmm. Then the day you can't do it anymore, it's it not becomes, about the fact that you change your model yeah. for that customer. Mm. That customer just thinks, oh, you're no longer a good business. Yeah. So, Uti, there is something like that just struck me when you were talking about um, company and culture and customer service relationship. So, there, you also said something about, uh, let me go to this. You, what about customer service or customer o service officers who uh, are specifically trained for a particular position or a job? How do they relate? We have individuals who are um, specifically trained for a particular um, customer service job, maybe to interact with the customer, or those who are at the back end who are just taking calls. Is there a relationship between them, or is there something that can be, can they, um, what's the right word to use for this one now? Can they do the job do together? Can they do both? Yeah. Exactly. So well, I mean, has to be first specific. to remember there, right, is that in every organization, there's a popular quote that says, you know, customer service is not a department. It's everybody's job. Mm -hmm. Okay. So every business exists to serve customers. It doesn't matter where, whether you're the cleaner who's cleaning the, the business premises, mm -hmm. who has no direct contact with customers. It doesn't matter whether you're the driver who's driving a salesperson who, again, has no contact with the customers. So no matter where you sit within the organization, and this is where experience too is important, every member of the organization needs to understand how they fit in. If all the parts of an engine of a car don't understand how they impact the other parts of the engine, the car is not going to work. So I need to understand that if I don't do my job, even though I don't talk to customers, I don't see customers, my failure to do my job will impact the customer. And this is what you find in most customer facing roles. I'm sure you, you both will have experiences where you've called the contact center and the person on the, on the, on the other end of the line appears so clueless. Exactly. It's not because the person is clueless. It's just because that thing that you need fixed, there's somebody else in the background, what we like to call the back office, the support teams. Mm -hmm. There's somebody there who's responsible for doing that thing. Now, perhaps that thing might take 24 hours, but you keep calling every hour. Guess what? That person on the phone is going to run out of things to say. It's going to sound like, oh, you don't want to help me. You're not useful. You're not helpful. Hmm. 
But the reality of it is all they're waiting for is for someone in the background to say, oh, it's been fixed. Exactly. Because people need to understand that the person who is on the phone in that contact center, their primary function is to engage you. Their primary function is to speak to you. Their primary function is not necessarily to resolve all of your issues. They're there to resolve your basic inquiries. They're there to be knowledgeable enough about the business to help you understand what the process would be for resolving whatever it is that you need to, to, to get done. But their job will not necessarily be to actually carry out that task of resolving it. So it's actually a difficult task to be a front-end worker hmm. because you constantly are trying to defend the actions of the back office who typically don't understand the urgency for hmm. you as the front-end. Hmm. So everybody plugs in. Everybody should be trained. And this is why the culture, Amazon's um, Jeff Bezos, who is, who is the, the source of our quotes for today's show, you know, in Amazon, their mission is to be the most customer-centric company on earth. So whether you work in IT in Amazon or you work, you know, online customer service, everybody understands that that is our goal. The culture we're creating is to drive that mission. Hmm. So everybody in the business has to have that same vision. How does business ABC want their customers to feel? What do they want their customer to experience? Does everybody have that vision in their head? That's, okay, so, that's what no, ties okay. it together. So Uti, I love what you said about culture, right? Understanding that you want to build a culture within your organization. Now, what role does the culture of the community or wherever your business is uh, positioned at, what role does that play? So for instance, in Lagos, there's a different culture in Lagos compared to Kaduna, compared to Joss, compared to Ibadan, right? So how, in creating that customer experience strategy, how much of the external culture should you consider when creating that experience? Because I'm just thinking, the lady that would buy a 17,000 Naira lip gloss, right? There should be an ambience, there should be a lot of things that she would experience when she works into the store mm. compared to the 500 Naira one. Can I, put, can I merge both customers in one? Wouldn't the 500 Naira one feel like, ah, I'm intimidated, I can't enter inside this place, you know? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't I just focus, on, uh, focus my business on maybe the luxury brand or the luxury customer and just leave it? Can I do both? So how much does the external uh, culture play when creating a strategy for your customer experience? Okay. So I'll take the two, two questions, one after the other. In terms of culture, right, key to customer experience is the customer. Hmm. Key to being able to create an experience is to understand the needs of the customer. Mm -hmm. First of all, you have to understand the personas of your customers. Hmm. If you imagine in every organization today, let me tie in your next, your, the question you asked. So there's a lipstick brand that sells a 17,000 naira lipstick and sells a 500 naira lipstick. Of course, one brand can do that. You see so many luxury brands in every product category has something in different caters. So you will have what designers like to call a diffusion line. So they've got their $20,000 bag. Then they've got one that is $1,000, mm. different markets, mm -hmm. but they're still selling it. So it's how you position the products within the business. So there are different elements and different sections. Of course, the person who buys the $20,000 bag will probably get a bag that's in a cloth bag, probably comes with a lot of bells and whistles. And the person who gets the $1,000 bag will probably just get you know, the, the nice branded gift bag. So there are different ways to build strategies in for the same business. But if I come back to that element of culture, you must, before you plan any experience, understand your customer. Mm. So a Chinese customer, their culture is different in China totally. compared to a Nigerian customer. It's important in Nigeria to call everybody Ma or Sa. If you build a culture in Nigeria that says, oh, we're first name basis, you might hit some roadblocks. <laughs> yeah. You will get a few customers that tell you, no, I am doctor. I no, am auntie. I am Mrs. <clears throat> you will get that. So you must build different within that customer experience strategy. There's an element of what we call personas. So you, you build personas for your different type of clientele. What age range are they? What gender are they? What are their aspirations? Hmm. You hear things like, oh, a brand is aspirational. 
I want to associate with that brand. They've built that because they've looked at the kind of clientele that they want to attract. So you build the different personas. And for each of those personas, you then design what we call customer journeys. Hmm. So what is it that from the point in time, remember a lot of, a lot of businesses think that, oh, my experience or my business starts when the customer works, walks into my premises. No, you have to think way before that. Hmm. Your business starts when the customer has a need. Hmm. If I am hungry, I want food. When I want to get food, if I want to go out to eat food, if I've never heard of you, I can't come to you. Yeah. Oh, my God. Communication. <laughs> I must be visible. Whether it is online, whether it is word offline, of mouth, yeah. all of these things are a strategy, the... which is what is customer experience. Hmm. So I know where, before we run over time, we there's so much to say, but there's a lot of things to think about um, in all of that. And, and for small businesses, it, it doesn't have to be daunting. I mean, I work with so many small businesses yeah. to help them build their customer strategy. And it's little shifts. These kinds of conversations that we mm. have sometimes over a meal and people change their, their complete structure Absolutely. of their business. Exactly. Absolutely. I think we can wrap it up there. Thank you so much, Util. We, were going to, we are going to keep this conversation going because, <laughs> I mean, for anybody that understands what the future is like, mm. you, have, you, are, you have a lot more competition compared to before. Exactly. So now is the time to really be strategic about your business and don't Extremely. just leave it. Yeah. yeah. We are sorry you can't take um, mm. comments. <laughs> We've run out of time. Thank you again, Uti. Thank you, Isi, for doing this with me. Now, Waze was birthed from the need to impact. And this year, we are starting our CSR focused on curbing unemployment. Now, if you are a company and you have available um, allocations for us for internship, please reach out to us. And if you are um, looking for a place to intern with, um, reach us out and follow us all uh, on all our social media platforms. As we have said, we keep saying it is an all-year-round engagement, so keep telling your friends and let them reach out to us. I've gotten a lot of CVs. We're still hoping we'll be able to find allocations for them. We've gotten some companies as well to partner with us. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. We see our customers as invited guests to a party, and we are the host. It's our job every day to make every important aspect of customer experience a little bit better. That's from Jeff. Bezos. We'll see you tomorrow as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.